it's Amy and I'm your sewing teacher and as you can tell by the title of my channel I am a sewing teacher I teach sewing in a high school in Ontario Canada and I have to tell you that with budgetary restraints in today's day and age we don't have a whole lot of money to spend on creating a great sewing experience for our students so I actually have to do a lot of what I call fundraising. Now I'm not fundraising for money. I'm actually asking for donations. So I regularly go out to the stores in my area, to the boutiques and on many of the Facebook groups for sewers. And I let them know that I'm always looking for donations. So what I have today for you is a whole load of donations to go through. Now, I always say that this is one of my favorite things to do. I usually have about four or five times a year a very large donation or gathering of donations that I go through and it's almost like Christmas time. Sometimes I go through it and sometimes my students go through it, but always everything ends up at school and organized and ready for students to use I'm actually getting to be to the point where I can begin to share my resources with other sewing teachers in the area, and that makes me happy. Without any further ado, let's start going through this haul and let's see what we've gotten. Now, I'm so very excited to say thank you to the people who have provided all of this today. I'm going to put their names up on the screen. Some of them are through Facebook, some of them were through YouTube, some of them are subscribers like you. So the very first thing I want to share with you today, this one I really lucked out on. Um, I managed to score this lovely Janome Cover Stitch Machine. It is the Janome Cover Pro 1000. Now the woman who donated that cover stitch machine, she was very generous. She was moving house and she was downsizing into a smaller apartment from a home and she gave lots of these bins and that machine. So she was very, very happy that it was going to go to a cause and get used well. And I was very, very happy that my classroom is going to get a cover stitch machine which we don't have and they're very expensive and that's certainly not something that would be um that we would be able to get with our budget so thank you very much so first let's go through some of these actually let's go through a bin first because then i'll have an empty bin that i can put things back into i think the best way to do this is to show you what i get and talk about it for a second and then put it to the side and we'll just keep going that way. So um, I haven't been through this bin so I don't actually know what's here. So it's all a surprise just like Christmas. So the first thing here is this really great piece of material. It is a woven back and it almost looks like raw silk but I know that it's not. It looks like something that would be made uh, used for shoemaking. Actually, I think I can use that in bags. It's nice and thick, almost like a buckram. That's fantastic. Thank you. I got some labels. These say XL. That's great. And some snaps, a whole thing of snaps. That's great. They're all going to, I'm going to say everything is great because everything is great. But um, just so that you know, we got some, um, I don't even know what these are called. These are connectors for bags and, and collars, I suppose. Great. Again, I'm going to say great again and again. All right. Now, oh, this is the piece that you use for putting the snaps, putting the snaps in. So we'll keep that with the snaps, that's great. This is a ruler that can be used for quilting, but it's also really great for um, corner turning and poking through the corner. I really like that it's see-through and it has a line on it, so I'm really able to use that well. There's some batting. Oh, a squeaker for a toy. 
I actually have about a hundred of these squeakers for when I use denim to uh, make animal to make animal toys. Wax-free tracing paper. We can definitely use that. Oh, four more, four more squeakers. <laughs> oh, a handy dandy traveling measuring tape. You can never have enough of those. And some buttons that you can cover. Um, also in here, we have about two meters of navy jersey, two-way stretch. Looks like t-shirt material, so that's going to be awesome for a student. Oh my goodness, and a whole organizing system. Wow, this is an over-the-door organizing system that she's used for her notions. I don't know that you guys can see this. But there's all sorts of goodies in here. Okay, let's see what we have. This is a great thing for me to use in the classroom for hanging and organizing. So that's excellent. We have some reflective tape and a little sewing kit that I can give to one of my students for at home. And what's this? Some little soft bags. Oh, all these measuring tapes. Oh, this is fantastic. So we have four more measuring tape. Oh, this is a neat little notion. So this is for tracing. So what you do when you're tracing is you put your tracing, you can put your tracing pencil in here and you can go along the edge and you can give it its seam allowance. So this was made by um, Berta, but it was, Berta obviously licensed this for Prim to um, sell and be, it's because Berta patterns don't give you a seam allowance. So this was to allow you to make your own a seam allowance and use the roller on the edge of the Berta pattern. So that's really great. I didn't even know that they made that. I just did it by hand. <laughs> that's excellent. And some rotary blades. Wow, this is like a major score. And oh, some powder, a little bit of powder for if you're working with vinyl or if you're working with something that's sticky on your machine, you can put a little bit of powder down and that will allow you to not stick. We have a brush for dusting and we have some markers for marking and we have a seam ripper blade. Oh, that's if you're using a razor like seam ripper. There's some blades, that's excellent. Some pattern hangers, what do we got? Oh, there's that, this is the razor blade seam ripper. I don't know, some of you might just use a regular seam ripper and not know of these razor blade ones. If you, if you feel like you have a steady hand, these are excellent because they are so much faster than picking out individually. Um, but be careful. They're like scalpels. They're super, super sharp. So now I have some scalpels and some seam rippers, and I'm not thinking I'm going to take these to school. This is probably something that I'll, I'll leave here at home and use here. And something I have no idea. Oh, wow. This is an awl, and it pokes holes, if you don't already know that, but I have never seen one with a cover. So that's kind of neat. Very good. I have lots of these hangers at school. These are really fantastic for hanging remnants, but also for hanging patterns. I will put a pattern on there and I'll hang the pattern. Um, something else I'll do is I'll put all the pieces, once they're cut, with the pattern or the template and I'll put it in there and then I'll hang it. And then that's my kind of to-do um, pile. Very good. And I'm gonna use this Notion Keeper over the door notion keeper at school for organizing. That's fantastic. Okay. So what else do we have in this bin? So we have a hanger. This one, you could hang scarves. You could hang belts. I think that's what this originally was for. I'm not sure what she used it for in her sewing room. If you have any idea what this could be used for in your sewing room, why don't you give me a comment? That would be great. We have some big threads, 
some serging thread, which of course all of you, if you've watched my videos, know that I use serging thread in my classroom and at home as regular thread by using a system up the back of the machine. Um, and that's always economically the best way to go. And we have some eight gauge wire and some bias tape, a little bit of rope, and what she's got something in a soft bag here. What's in the soft bag? Oh, my very favorite thing. More clips. This little bag is full of clips. I can never have enough clips and my students have been asking for clips. They're tired of using pins. So that little bag will go and somebody at school will be able to use clips. That's fantastic. And we have a little fun tin full of safety pins. And, and oh my goodness, my students will love this. We have some patterns for dog outfits. Look how cute that is. Oh, this is gonna be so much fun. And a dog coat. And we have the dog coat in twice. So more than one student can use it at a time, which is fantastic. As you know, if you've watched my videos, I don't allow my students to cut the patterns. My students have to trace the patterns in order to use them. It teaches them how to save and it's just economically the only way to go um, when we're trying to use patterns year to year. Um, at home, it's always good to trace a pattern because you never know if you're gonna be sewing something for yourself or for someone else or if sizes will change. So it's always good to not cut your patterns. Plus then you don't lose the pattern pieces. So tracing the pattern is always the best way to go. And at the bottom, we have some micro suede, which is really awesome. So that was the first bin. Thanks for joining me for the first bin. Let's see what we have next. So now I'm on to bin two. And I, like I said before, I haven't seen this, so this is all new to me, so it is just like Christmas. Now the first thing that I see here is a little container. This would be really great for me to use for, I could put hardware for the students for when they're making their bags because they make tote bags or purses. So that would be really great organization for school. And oh, this this woman who donated this stuff is really into her dogs. So here's a, a nice little book called Sew Dog. So easy sew dog wear and custom gear for home and travel. I see upcoming videos. <laughs> I hope that you have dogs. In the comments, why don't you tell me if you have a dog and what kind you have? Maybe the snuffle pad video, I'll put it up here is something that you'd like to watch. So next we have some fabric. We have about, wow, two meters of four-way stretch. This is really heavy. I'll have to do a lighter test to test to see what kind of fabric this is, but I think this would be really great. This is a really heavy jersey. I think this would be a really great um, long sleeve yoga jacket, probably, or heavyweight tights. That'd be great. All right, what's next? We have another heavier weight material. This is a heavy weight t-shirt jersey, but there's only about a meter and a half here. So a t-shirt of some sort for some student, that's great. And then we have some micro fleece. There's about a meter of micro fleece there. Oh my goodness. Score everybody. I have inch and a half polypropylene webbing. So this is really fantastic for pre-made um, strapping for bags. Um, or if you wanted to make leashes, it would be good for leashes and you could put a nice little cotton, cute little fabric on it. But wow, that's great. There's so much in this one. Uh, there's more. This one I think is about an inch. One thing, one is smaller than the other. That's great. My students will definitely get some use out of that because if you're making a bag, doing a little cheater strap is also good. Okay. And I have another zipper. Oh, we have a few zippers, a nice long zipper. And oh, we have some more of the, oh, sorry for all the noise. This is going to be a loud one, people. Um, we have some more clasps. 
So I'm gonna have those going to school and a rotary cutter to go with that rotary blades that we just saw in the other bin. That's really fantastic. And then, okay, what's this? Oh, this is a French curve ruler that has an actual straight edge also. I've never seen one like this. So this one has armhole curve, hip curve, front neckline and back neckline. Well, I do definitely don't have one of these, so the students will definitely get great use out of that. I try to teach the grade 12s how to hack their own patterns, so that'll be excellent. What else do we have? We have some eyelets, they're not rivets. We have some eyelets and the eyelet um, attachment piece. So that's gonna go to school for sure. And we have some toggles. Somebody can make that long sleeve yoga jacket and have some toggles on their hoodie. Some rainbow serging thread. If you haven't seen the rainbow thread yet and top stitch with this yet, you need to try it. Especially if you're making a very colorful bag or colorful wallet, the rainbow thread is awesome. And my students will definitely get a kick out of that. I really don't let them use the rainbow thread for anything except for a wallet or a bag because you have more bang for your buck than using it to top stitch a regular garment. And then we have lots of rolls of serger thread. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight rolls of serger thread here. We have some bias binding and that's the end of bid number two. So I'm moving on to bid number three. This is really awesome. I have to tell you, it's like Christmas. It's like birthdays. It's opening things that I didn't get for myself and I have no idea what it is, but I know it will go to such a good cause. Okay, so let's see what we've got here. Oh. Okay, so in one of my other videos, I talked about using straws to turn um, tubes and this is actually a tube turner. And what she has here is she has a very thin, almost like a straw and a metal rod. And you would put the, you would put the tube onto here, onto there, and then you would put the fabric and tuck the fabric in, and then you would put, push it through. So that's really fantastic. Oh, <gasps> there are three of them in different sizes. That's so exciting. That's going to transform my students' ability to turn tubes. Ooh, these are brand new. This has never been used. This is so exciting. Okay, we have some double-sided tape. As you all know, double-sided tape is one of my favorite things. Keeps your zippers in line. It keeps your, bi your bias tape in line. And speaking of bias tape, look at this. These are fusible. Oh, this is to make, oh, this is gonna be life changing. I can't even tell you. You use the double-sided tape. Oh, it's not double-sided tape. Oh my goodness. It's fusible webbing. You use the fusible webbing and you use the fusible bias tape maker and you make bias tape that can be ironed on. I cannot tell you how awesome that is. That is fantastic. So we got a fusible bias tape maker that is a quarter of an inch, three eighths of an inch, 10 millimeters, 18 millimeters, which is three quarters of an inch, 12 millimeters, which is half an inch, and some more fusible webbing. Wow, this is gonna be a whole lesson in itself. My students are gonna love this. I always love it when somebody adds a little book or something to the bin because it just changes things up so much because so many of these books are out of print and you're not able to get anymore. So it's really fantastic when I get donations of books that have to do with sewing. So I'm gonna show you this one and this is 
this is going to be so awesome. I talked with my students all the time about reusing all of their fabric and reusing their clothes in a way that they don't end up in a landfill. Textile reuse is very important to me. And we just got ourselves a pattern book for making rag rugs. Now this would be a fantastic project. This is so exciting. I can't even tell you how exciting this is. So let's get back to it. Now we're on bin number three. These are fantastic. If you have never seen a Dritz Easy Hem, you need to get yourself one. This is metal, which means you can put this in your hem and you can iron on it. Oh, we have more of the legging material. We have another meter and a half. We have some more batting. We have some, wow, we have about three meters. This is a poly. This is like um, an athletic, this is like an athletic um, legging material. This is, this is excellent. It's four-way stretch. It's got a nice little print on it, like a charcoal kind of hatching on the black. That's great. And this is a French Terry. This is really fantastic weight. This is great. So much great fabric. My students will be able to make all sorts of things. And now that we have a cover stitch machine, they're going to be able to do a nice chain stitch. Oh, they're going to love it. Fantastic. And oh, lots of things in the bottom of that bin. This is a super soft one-sided smooth minky. There's about two meters here in a light gray. This will be great for pillows or for stuffed animals because my students do love to make some stuffies. And we have some denim. Check to see if it's stretched denim. It is not stretched denim. So this is a regular cotton woven denim. Lightweight chambray. This is great. It's probably about a meter here. Somebody could make themselves a tank. That's awesome. Okay, what do we have in the bottom? And she's given me some really fantastic scissors here. We have some flat cutting scissors, some high end snippers, thread snippers. These are great. They have little spring back action. That's good. Pinking shears, good quality pinking shears. I'm always looking for that. Some little fancy embroidery thread clippers. Some Singer sewing oil. This looks like a bias tape maker, but I'm not sure because it's got like a little bit of a double. Unless it's a double fold bias tape maker. Does anybody know what this is? I'll show you up close and I'll take a picture too. If you know what this is, give me a comment. Let me know what that is. Is it a double fold bias tape maker? because I've never seen one with a double like that before. Thanks for hanging out with me today, everybody. We're on bin number four. We're about uh, two thirds of the way through all of the donations. We're gonna hit these garbage bags soon, but thanks for hanging out and, and continuing through. There's not a whole lot in some of these um, bins, so it's not gonna take us very long to get through. Another pair of pinking shears. There we go. Oh, and look, making patterns from finished clothes. I did make a video on how to do this. This, um, I took one of my favorite t-shirts and turned it into um, another t-shirt. Um, however, I forgot to add the seam allowance and if I had this book, I probably wouldn't have forgotten. Um, so that shirt that I made ended up fitting my daughter. So if you wanted to watch that video, I'll put it up there in the, in the information. But this is really fantastic. It shows you how to lay it down to make sure that you are doing it right and it won't be too small like I did. <laughs> okay, and we also got this designing apparel through the flat pattern. So this is really interesting. This is gonna be great for school and teaching the kids who are in the grade 12 class how to design their own clothes. Oh, and this is a whole giant roll of pre-cut so you can make your own bias tape. 
That's excellent. Can always use that. And we have a wrist pin cushion. Kids will like that. And we have a square ruler. Excellent. And an actual square ruler. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Sometimes I think I'm just so funny. Okay. And oh, little gloves. You know, dealing with fabric all the time, you end up with super dry hands. All of you would know that. Um, and using the little um, quilting gloves, even if I'm not quilting, really helps with that. But I also like them because they have the little grippers on them. And another pin cushion. And a little organizing tray. And another ruler. You can never have enough rulers in a classroom, that's for sure. We have a little organization bin and some buttons. So those will go to school and some more thread. So we would have to clean that up because it's been rolled around with the cat, I think. <laughs> a little magnifier. Okay, and that's it for bin number four. We are so close to the end. I'm the bins and I'm moving on to the bags. Most of these bags are indeed fabric. Now the first bag, I can't even show you what's in it because it is all scraps. Um, we will use big scraps in the classroom, especially if somebody decides that they want to make a quilt. So there are all different kinds of scraps in here, but I'm really not going to get really into it. But the scraps are very big. They are about half a meter or so. Well, actually that one's a meter. So there, this has to be taken apart and sorted in the classroom. And I have students who get their community hours by sorting through this, um, measuring it, taping it, and then writing how much is there. And then they put it in the remnant section. In my classroom, if the kids want to sew something up um, extra, they can use any of the remnants fabrics for that without having to ask. So at any point and any time during the classes, the students don't have to ask permission to use anything from the remnant section of the storage cupboard. But if they want something that is on a bolt or if something that ha we have substantial amounts of fabric for, or something that's a little more expensive, they have to ask permission to use that fabric. So that's a great, it's a great thing to have this bag of scraps, but I'm not going to go through it with you. It's just way too much time and to show and share with you. We have some thread. Oh, great. We have threads. We have hand needles. We have some pins. We have all sorts of neat things. We have a pin cushion and we have, oh, multiple Oh, we have about four different seam rippers. So that's a good little bag of goodies. And ribbon, a bag of ribbons of all different kinds. So we have some fabric here. Let's see what we have. We have some sweater knit in a nice pink. I'm sure somebody's gonna love to make a sweater out of that. There's lots there. We have this really cute fleece called Fleagle the Beagle. And there's a little panel so I can teach kids what a panel is and how to use a panel um, when they're making purses and bags or maybe when they're um, making t-shirts. Panels are always fun to work with. And this is, it's a striped knit. So it's a Roblin. That's great, awesome. And then we have some canvas weight. These people are actually on skates. It looks like all different types of falling, I think. And as a figure skater, I can tell you that's quite funny, actually. And these are quilting cottons. And you can see this lady is a quilter. She has donated um, some of her scraps for quilting and they're very cute, very coordinated. And I can use these squares that are already made to show the kids what they can do and then I can show them how to do that and we'll see about getting the kids making quilts and oh there are so many squares already done 
so many squares already done. Well, this will be handy. Oh, and they even have, oh, they have some cutouts too. You know what, I'm gonna take this whole thing and I'm probably gonna make a quilting package so that one of the students who wants to take on a quilting um, project has a place to start. So they're not actually starting from the beginning. And sometimes it's that, that getting started from the beginning when you are a beginner, this is actually probably a great head start for somebody. So that's awesome. So let's move on to the next garbage bag. Let's see what we have. This says, Amy, these three bags are for you. That's good because I took them. <laughs> and let's see what we have. Oh, some more faux fur. We have some faux fur here in all different colors. Somebody made teddy bears because look at all these colors in the faux fur. Lots and lots of color. Pink. Okay. I'm going to keep this together. This is the faux fur. And I'm going to go put that other piece of faux fur that we had. And I am going to put that with my teddy bear stuff. It's three more things to look at. No, oh, and here we go. So this was from the same lady who did the quilting bag of stuff for us. So I'm just going to quickly look at this. Oh yes, some black Kona. Oh, and she has a Kona. I don't know if some of you um, who don't quilt know this, but you can ask for color swatch yardage like this, and you can pay, uh, usually it's like $6 or so, depending where you buy your, your fabric from. And then you can have this so you know what colors the Kona comes in. And Kona color solids are excellent quality and really good for um, all sorts of makes. So I'm actually going to um, keep that and hang it in the classroom so that the kids know um, what's available. We have some polka dots and we have, again, we have some more quilting squares already done and some triangles already cut and ready to go. So you can see the triangles are already cut and ready to go. So I think this bag is also some, yeah, look at there's all these squares ready to go. All these squares are ready to go. So I think that I can make multiple quilting packages for the kids and see if we have more than one student who would like to start um, putting together a quilt. We can do some baby quilts to start. But we have one more container left. And this is our last container and it's full of notions and notions is a great way to start and a great way to end. So we're going to look through here and see what notions this person gave. Now this is a different person than before. So we have no idea what it is. Oh, look, this is a little charm pack with um, batiks and these ones are painted fish. So that'll be fun for somebody to use for quilting. We have a little quilting package here on the teeny tiny zipper pouch. Everything you need is in here. So this is what I'm talking about when I say I want to make little quilting packages for them so they have a starting place. This has the instructions and all the hardware and everything you need to make this teeny tiny zipper pouch. Oh, and we have a topper already made here at the beginning of something. Oh, this cute little dogs. So that would be something that a student could use this as the base and then they could continue around and they could make a lap quilt for somebody that they love or for themselves. What else do we have? We have a quick clip. Oh, for those of you who are quilters, you would know that you have to baste your quilts before they are quilted. And this is a little easier, faster, safer tool to help you do that. We have some more thread. We have some qu quilting pins on a nice magnetic dish. We have lots of different threads here. Um, we have some variegated rainbow threads, different colors. Oh, let's see, we have some binder clips. We have some more music fabric. And these are all the threads that I got from this donation. So that's it. That's everything. 
Well, thank you so much for joining me today and checking out my donation haul for my class. This has been a great time with you. Thanks for joining me on this sewing journey. It's sometimes my students, it's sometimes my children, it's sometimes my sewing journey, but it's always yours. Hope you have a great week. We'll see you next time. Bye.